Hello, one and all. Welcome to this edition of Kits Corner. But a fantastic day so far. So we got some earth shattering news, folks. Yes, earth shattering because of how much this exploded the Internet and caused a viral spur. And the fact that we're coming up to the election in the United States, it's caused panic mode for the establishment on just the explosive material of Joe Rogan interviewing Donald Trump. And it has caused a magnitude on the Internet in more ways than one, especially knowing that Trump's Rogan episode, this is from the New York Post, Trump's Rogan episode hits 20 million views in 20 hours on YouTube. 20 million views in 20 hours, a a million per hour. That is incredible, folks. Considering the fact that Kamala Harris When she did do her tiny little media appearances, I think she barely touched 600,000 maybe. I think that was the final result of the Call Me Daddy podcast that she was on. But 20 million views in 20 hours. You can't even get that on television these days. Like I can't even name a particular show that's ever gotten this much ratings in the past couple years. So... The New York Post put this together and says Trump's episode, The Joe Rogan Experience, has now amassed over 20 million views on YouTube in 20 hours since its release, making it one of the most viral episodes in the popular podcast history. The episode massive viewership dwarfs his audi- average audience, which is on t- tops mounts about a couple million views on YouTube. The Trump episode is trending to be one of the show's most viewed episodes ever. Trump and Rogan got even got more eyes than the historically well-watched World uh, World Series Game 1 between the Yankees and the Dodgers, which brought in 15.2 million viewers. Game 1 was the most-watched World Series opener since 2017. I mean, that's, that's a high bar to crack. I mean, Yankees and Dodgers, especially with the World Series, that's, that's a high bar to already... Try to pack that, and I will, to be honest, you know, I I don't mind baseball. Baseball is a fun sport. I just don't think I could sit down and watch a game. (laughs) That's just my view. People may think otherwise, but I just can't sit there for hours on end to watch one single baseball game, even if it is the World Series. And I'm not anti-baseball, but that's just, that's just my view. Um... So, JRE, most popular episode ever featuring Elon Musk smoking and joining in 2018, then amassed 69 million viewers in the years since the viral moment. The blockbuster Trump interview was wide-ranging, lasted three hours, covering topics like UFOs, assassination attempts, nuclear energy, beached whales, and all matters politics. Earlier this week, Vice President Kamala Harris' campaign announced that she would not appear on America's most popular podcast, Due to scheduling conflicts, Mm. Harris didn't make the time for Alex Cooper's Call Her Daddy podcast earlier this month. That episode of the popular sex-centric show has garnered 687,000 views on YouTube in the three weeks since it's been up. The interview released yesterday, Trump said Harris couldn't handle speaking externally for the extended time with Rogan. Can you imagine... Let me do the... Can you imagine... Kamala doing this show. She'd be laying on the floor. Trump rifled. If she did this kind of interview, you hope. I hope she does. But it'd be a mess. It'd just be awful. She has poor viewership. Poor ratings. She'd be laying on the floor. Comatose. She'd be saying, call in the medics. Rogan pushed back against the Republican candidate. I would imagine doing the show. Yada, yada, yada. So... That's incredible stuff. And I'm going to show you one of the most, um, I think one of the most influential clips of that interview. And one of the, the reason I'm going to show you this clip in particular is not only do I think this is an effective clip, just highlighting the conversation, but this is also what makes me, um, adore Joe Rogan as probably one of the best, uh, if, if not one of the top, top contenders of interviewers in this industry because the fact that Joe Rogan being this kind of nonpartisan genuine interviewer 
Like, he's not scheduled to do a podcast to try to sway to a certain agenda. He is just a comedian in his home in Austin, Texas, who brings on people of all walks of life, everyone from, you know, uh, Ben Shapiro to Miley Cyrus, brings these people on to have genuine conversations. And considering the, you know, typical stylings of daytime produced television or, you know, the late night talk show format, there's a particular reason why Joe Rogan amasses the viewership compared to te- the compared to traditional television and why the talk show industry can never hold a candle to someone like him this is the this is the clip that I would show people to show the true essence of what Joe Rogan truly is and watch watch for yourself one of the things I like about doing a show like this, can you imagine Kamala doing this show? She'd I be, could imagine her doing this laying, show. She'd I be laying to, on the floor. She was supposed to do it, and she might still she do it, and I hope she does. She's not going to I will it. talk to her like a human being. I would if try to have a conversation If she did this kind of an interview her. with you, I hope she does, because it would be a mess. She'd be <laughs> laying on the floor, Kamala. She'd, you'd be saying, call in the medics. I think... We'd have a fine conversation. I think I'd be able to talk to her. I wouldn't try to interview her. I'd just try to have a conversation with her and hopefully get to know her as a human being. That was my goal, having her on, trying to get her to express herself just as a I don't know if these – I don't think these formats are good. I don't think that two people – first of all, I hate the idea of the presidential debates because I hate the idea of a time limitation on complex ideas. Also, you have to break – I think co- you have to have the debates, though. One of the – So – that is a powerful clip. And the fact that, you know, Donald Trump being Donald Trump, using his character of trying to mimic the fact that, oh, can you imagine Kamala being here? She would just be awful on the show. She'd be on the ground, comatose. Oh, God, just crazy. She wouldn't get the ratings. And the fact that Joe Rogan kind of sidesteps that and says, listen, I'm going to have a conversation as a genuine person, I'm not here to interview her. I'm not her, here to debate. I'm not here to applaud her. I just want to get to know that person. And that's one of the things that makes Joe Rogan's interview style probably one of the best I've ever seen. And the fact that, you know, I could sit here and watch hours on end, depending on the guest, depending on the, the conversation, even, even guests I don't even know about, I could sit hours on end listening to conversations like Joe Rogan interviewing people that even I disagree with. I can have a genuine conversation with people like that and listen to that conversation between two normal human beings than any scripted television show that you see on daytime. When you see celebrities going on to The View or uh, Drew Barrymore or any of the talk shows or late night comics, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's all scripted. It's all drafted. They already send preempted questions, and it's all just advertisement. It's all there to advertise. You know, oh, do you have an upcoming movie? Oh, let's see a clip. Oh, did you realize you were in a commercial for this? Oh, yeah, that's great. Hollywood's great. Yeah. Like, that's all it is. It's a giant advertisement. It's an infomercial after infomercial with just random celebrity endorsements. But Joe Rogan's podcast is an actual, sincere, heartfelt, human connection interview where he can have these conversations with anybody that walks in and speak to them like you are a genuine person. And that's what makes it so effective. That's what makes it so engaging. And this is the clip that I would show to people who either may not know who Joe Rogan is and don't know what his podcast is about, or even to people that are disgusted by Joe Rogan because they're caught up with the propaganda. And they think that Joe Rogan's some sort of monster, or he's a right winger, or he's a conspiracy nut, or how crazy he is. I would show him this clip and say, listen to the tone. Listen to the fact that he's not he he's he's stepping aside from Donald Trump's, you know, crazy rhetoric for a second to say, I'm willing to have Kamala Harris on too, just to have a genuine conversation. Just to talk to her as a person, as adults. And even just reaching out that way, Kamala Harris is still, like, her campaign is very 
sketchy on even acknowledging whether or not she's going to go on Joe Rogan. So that was that, that's incredible to witness that. And Joe Rogan even reached out to the Harris campaign and then wrote this to his audience here on X. He stated that also for the record, the Harris campaign has not passed on doing the podcast. They offered a date up for Tuesday, but I would have to travel to her and they only want to do an hour. So what does that kind of say about Kamala Harris and the fact that even with the rambunctious media appearances, like Trump's been on the Ovan, Trump's been on, uh, he's done uh, Andrew Schultz. He's done, um, there was another podcast I'm listing out here. He's done all these alternative kind of podcasts, radio shows, and interviews where you're definitely seeing a shift of viewership. You're reaching out more to the younger audience because younger audiences are not going to be watching The View at 11 o'clock in the morning. They're going to be listening to Joe Rogan on their phones, on, on their tablets, on their laptops, and listening to the conversation. So Trump's campaign is actually being smart by reaching out to that younger demographic, whereas the Harris campaign, if she really wanted to garner those votes, if she really wanted to reach out to it, uh, she needs to take the take a lesson from Trump and his campaign and to go on to these podcasts. And even Joe Rogan, even though, you know, the Democratic Party has smeared this guy nine ways a Sunday, still calls him the most awful person on earth for being this comedian with the successful podcast show. They call him the worst person on earth because of the whole COVID scandal and and how, how they lied about Ivermectin, how they lied about him on CNN. And Joe Rogan still is going to swallow that away to have a genuine conversation with Kamala Harris because he wants to understand and get a personal connection with Kamala the person. Not Kamala the politician, but Kamala the person. So that's, that's, that's incredible. He even says that here, my sincere wish is just to have a nice conversation to get to know her as a human being. I really hope we can make this happen. But she wants, he wants, he wants, she wants him to travel to her and only do an hour. And I'm guessing you can't, you know, bring that Texas charm, the, you know, bring some Austin goodies to wherever she is. It's got to be like a Cabernet from uh, Napa Valley. She's, she's up in Northern California, right? That that would be my understanding. Bring bring some of that wine with her. Let her cool down a bit. So, because of how popular this interview got, and because of how popular uh, Joe Rogan is, and how he's kind of this new mainstream media of people watching them instead of traditional television, they are in panic mode. And by they, I mean the establishment. I mean Harris's campaign. I mean the donor class is in panic mode in the fact that, oh my God, Trump went on Rogan. People are going to listen to Trump on Rogan and it's going to inspire more people away from the Democratic establishment, from the status quo. And they're going to bring up controversial topics that you know for a fact they're not going to bring up on Kimmel or Fallon. So that's why they did this. And this is a bit of a kicker here. So this guy, Jonathan Stigma, uh, point this out. It's very clear that Google and YouTube is suppressing the Joe Rogan episode with Donald Trump. None of the top results are the actual episode. And this became more, I would say this became more viral than the interview itself because people that were trying to watch this on YouTube and searching on Google could not actually find this interview. Couldn't actually find it. They were trying to smear it away and you could see kind of the Clip there, they got, uh, you know, they got MSNBC, they got Fox News commenting on this. They got all the news networks covering it, but they don't actually have the interview by Joe Rogan. So it's kind of interesting that they're trying to do this in secrecy, but because the fact that 20 million people still got into watching this episode, it's, it's not going to turn away people it's not you're, 
you know, they're doing everything to try to silence last minute resorts to try to silence out uh, Donald Trump just mentioning on these outsider networks and it's not even working. It's not working because people are noticing they're they're picking up on this. They know that it's being smeared by Google and YouTube. And those are the big donors of Kamala Harris's campaign. Surprise, surprise. This, though, is interesting. This, though, is hilarious. Because, like I said, they're doing everything, everything, last-minute resorts, scraping the bottom of the barrel to try to smear Trump's campaign, to try to smear the Trump wave. And we've seen all the, you know, postings about the uh, Madison Square Garden rally, how they said it was like a Nazi rally, even though you got RFK Jr. there, you got Tulsi Gabbard there, you got blacks and Latinos and 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 Puerto Ricans and uh, people from all sorts of different backgrounds, gay, lesbian, trans. Like it's 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 amazing that the the party that's unifying the most people is being called out for being a Nazi party, even though the party that's calling out the other party for being a Nazi has billionaires and trillionaires that all act the same way. <laughs> like just a backwards upside down world, including Wikipedia. Wikipedia editors officially deemed Trump as a fascist. The Donald Trump and fascism Wikipedia page appeared the same day the Guardian published a 4,000 word article called Is Donald Trump a Fascist? And it's still up. It's still up. I, wow. Could, could they just be more obvious? Could they just be more obvious to show how they are desperate? They are so desperate to try to smear this campaign. That's just the most absurd, laughable situation where you have to get your buddies at Wikipedia, the CIA editors at Wikipedia, to... Com to to combine Donald Trump and fascism and turn that into a Wikipedia page. And we know this because if you look at Wikipedia, if you look at the background and who actually operates Wikipedia, we know that has intelligence backings. We know that the CIA plays a role. Same with Mossad. And that is why certain pages of certain people, like, for example, Jimmy Dore, or Martin Luther King Jr., or any sort of uh, political revolution. And I don't mean, like, Black Lives Matter revolution. I mean, like, actual economic class uh, unity revolutions get smeared nine, nine ways a Sunday on Wikipedia because of stuff like this. Because it's backed by the deep state that definitely does not want to see a Trump surge. They definitely don't want to see... Uh, mega soaring they don't want to see unification of all sorts of people gathering behind this game show host that they built up for years that they loved and adored him for so many years and then all of a sudden trump became president and he thought hey if i'm president maybe i get to have a say on how the deep state should run oh hell no oh hell no you as being president you're just a mascot you're just there as a puppet. You're just there as the figurehead. We, the deep state that hides behind closet doors and smoke our cigars and uh, possibly do sacrifices at Bohemian Grove, allegedly, we are the ones that control everything. We're the ones that tell you how to operate the country. And they don't like that Donald Trump is not an easy ploy. They don't like the fact that he is a wild card. They don't like the fact that he's not 100% corrupted, much like their other counterparts. And that is why they smeared him nine ways a Sunday and gave up Trump, uh, gave trumped up charges towards him, did lawfare against him, tried to impeach him multiple times, tried to assassinate him multiple times. And now because he went on to Joe Rogan's podcast, one of the most vital podcasts, one of the most, you know, hard-hitting alternative media spheres in the world. And it became the most popular, successful 
video, the most successful episode of the most popular podcast, they are in panic mode, which is why they did. Now they're doing Wikipedia changes. Now they're trying to uh, censor out the original video on Google and and in YouTube, and they're doing everything in last resort to try to sway people away from another Donald Trump victory because they cannot ever have this guy in office ever again. They cannot have someone with his character, his temperament, or or his, or his wild cardness from gaining control of power. They need someone with a malice mind who has that public-private position and who could bomb villages overseas with a smile on their face. Because that's that's the that's the that's the look of the deep state is they want someone that they could smile and laugh and talk about, you know, LGBTQ issues, but then also take away rights and make an authoritarian hellscape. That's who they want.